We think um, this cycle has all the essential elements of a well-planned and well-structured lesson. So, for example, um, you know, clear learning outcomes. Uh, if you're going to introduce new information, well, you should at least kind of bear in mind that people take in information different ways. Visual, auditory, kinesthetic learners. Um, an activity section, which is a bigger part, where the students can actually be active in their learning, where they begin to process information, to argue, debate, share, um, begin to, to establish a meaning with the information. Uh, demonstrate learning, an opportunity for students to demonstrate what they now understand. And then I think the most important uh, bit of this structure, which is one we do least well, the review section. You know, actually reflecting on what have I learnt and how have, I, how have we learnt it. Uh, let's go through some of these stages in, in sequence. So. Um, let's look at this first one first, creating a community of learners and thinkers. I, I guess I should really have coloured this one yellow because it's supposed to be in this model, the sunlight which falls on every stage of the models. It's not the first step. It kind of governs every, every step, really. How do we do this, then, create a community of learners? Well, let's take the first one of those, motivation. You know, what motivates anybody to, to do anything? Well, I think there are three things that motivate someone. Um, one is, if what you're teaching me is absolutely fascinating, if it's really, really interesting, I'm going to want to learn about that. Uh, unfortunately for us in the UK, um, that's probably kind of 50% of the national curriculum out of the window. Uh, so the second thing that's going to kind of motivate me is if I can see a relevance for it. Um, if, as Alistair Smith says, you, you tune me into Radio WIIFM, Radio What's In It For Me, uh, you can make me see that what you're teaching me is going to make a difference to my life. You sell the benefits of the learning to me. And the third thing that will motivate me uh, is if I like you and I want you to like me back which is why relationships are so important uh, in education. Uh, take the second one of those, the emotional learning environment, the basics, uh, belonging, aspiration, safety, inclusion, challenge, self-esteem, building that kind of like emotional learning environment as well as the physical. What about creating a community of thinkers then? Making thinking explicit giving people vocabulary they can use to describe their thinking, spending time reflecting on not just what I've learned, but how did I learn, metacognition, giving students concrete tools like graphic organisers to begin to organise their information, tools to help them develop their thinking. OK, we're, we're now in the first stage of our cycle, connect the learning. This is the first three or four minutes when the students come in through the door. Uh, it's a three or four minute activity designed to get them thinking about the learning they did last lesson. That might have been last week. Now they need to be reminded of it. Or at the beginning of a topic to stimulate some thinking about the lesson to come. It could be a very simple activity like, for example, here are five jumbled up key words, work with a partner, unscramble the words to find five key words uh, from last, last lesson. Could be a picture. Here's a picture of a roller coaster. What do you think today's lesson might be about? Work in pairs, give me all your answers in two minutes' time. Useful start to the lesson, purposeful start to the lesson, uh, and time for me to do my register uh, as well. So very handy. <coughs> Big picture first. The brain likes to make connections. Often when we as teachers plan uh, a series of lessons, we can see the connections from one to the other because we plan a whole module of work. We seldom share that with the students. So we can see where we're going and why we're going there, but they can't. It's a little bit like if I kind of like took you, uh, if I took you to the top of the Empire States Building and um, I showed you the whole of New York kind of like below us uh, and asked you to make a map of New York, you'd be able to do that because you could see the whole of New York spread out at our feet and you'd be able to recognize big, uh, uh, big aspects of it, big features like Central Park, uh, and kind of like the Brooklyn Bridge and what have you, uh, and you'd be able to actually have a go at creating uh, that as a map. If I asked you to do that on arrival at Central Station in New York and gave you a bit of paper uh, and said, create me a map of New York, you know, you'd, you'd look at me like I was crazy. You wouldn't be able to do it. So seeing the big picture helps us to put the smaller bits uh, in context. Share the learning outcomes. 
I, I think at the heart of assessment for learning and learning uh, are, are having clear and unambiguous learning outcomes. We define learning outcomes like this. Learning outcomes are what the student is going to be able to do, describe, use, solve, list, repeat, compare, contrast at the end of the lesson, which they couldn't do before. So the teacher objective, that's what I want the students to be able to understand or do. Okay? Uh, the learning outcome is what will the students be able to do by the end of the lesson that they couldn't do before. Um, Learner outcomes may be based around uh, key questions or key issues. And don't forget, because we look at developing skills as well, learner outcomes might explicitly try to develop a skill. So by the end of this lesson, uh, we're going to be effective collaborators. Uh, we're going to be able to describe three strategies for working together as a group. <coughs> we also, I think, with learning with learner outcomes, we'd we try to look at the levels of thinking. I'll give you an example of that. Um, for example, in a science lesson, a learner outcome might be, uh, you'll be able to give me three examples of sedimentary rock. Okay? Limestone, mudstone, sandstone. It's knowledge. Uh, by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to explain to me how metamorphic rock is formed, what is comprehension. What about by the end of this lesson, you'll be able to compare and contrast the rock cycle to the water cycle? Well, now we begin to get up there to analysis. So when we set our learner outcomes, we begin to set the levels of thinking we're planning for in the lesson. School in uh, London, Horsenden Primary, uh, uses the cartoon characters, Wilf and Tibbs. Wilf is a goldfish. Uh, Tibbs, they have a cuddly little kitten. I couldn't quite uh, go with that, so I, I, I've chosen a more macho, kind of like tiger as my Tibbs. Wilf stands for what I'm looking for. Uh, in this example, what I'm looking for is you'd be able to use a range of graphic organisers to, to note down information quickly and easily. You'll begin to think about how you organise information. Tibbs, this is because. Selling the benefits to the learner. Why are we learning this? Well, this is because we're often asked to deal with uh, a lot of information quickly, uh, and graphic organisers will help us to do this. And this, I, I might actually do you know, with the students, in dialogue with the students. So, uh, what are the success criteria? If we can do this and do it well, what will that look like? And maybe this is something we have a dialogue. Maybe I leave this green box blank and I say, okay, Graham, if we can use this really well, uh, you know, what's it going to look like? And Graham might say, well, we'll be able to use our complete sunburst uh, organiser. And I might say, oh, Chris, well, what would a good one look like? Well, if it contained lots of information, maybe the information from Mauro's story. And I'd say, oh, good one. Let's put these up as our success criteria. That's what quality work is going to look like. So what am I looking for? Why are we learning it? And what will success look like in the lesson? <coughs>